Well, hello good people. This is the Legion Cube C530, a portable gaming station that's all about the mid-range spec. And I'm actually quite excited about this pre-built system because of its price, warranty and performance. It's got its competitive advantage in that regard. But the higher model, the C730, is also available with better GPU options and just other hardware and RGB illumination. So the C530 is all about that sweet spot for the target audience within that, not exactly budget, but value-oriented consumer. Now, I will say Lenovo Legion is a channel sponsor, but they were like, do your thing. We want an unbiased, genuine feedback loop. So I would love to hear what you guys think about the system. Let's begin right after this. The new Toshiba XS700 external SSD comes in this beautiful and minimalistic design. Its ultra portable form factor is perfect for creative professionals on the go and with blazing fast USB 3 Gen 2 transfer speeds and Toshiba's excellent three year warranty, reliability shouldn't be a concern. Check out the XS700 from Toshiba down below. All right, so let's begin with the most important aspect of any pre-built system, and that is value. And naturally, we can expect some form of price premium, but this is where the C530 becomes really interesting. So let's take the base model, for example, at $879. You get an i5-8400, GTX 1050 Ti, 8GB of RAM, an Optane module with one terabyte hard drive, keyboard mouse, Windows license, and a sweet case. If you were to buy these parts individually, you'll run about $810, which is about an 8% price premium, on the total value of the C530, which I think is pretty decent. This is not taking into account any shipping that you might have to pay for individual parts, and of course the time saved of building the system yourself. Now for the higher end configuration with an i7-8700, double the RAM, a PCIe SSD, and the RX 570, the price premium is about 17%, making it less of a good value. And so this base configuration then becomes pretty killer in price point, uh, but they do vary in regions, and I wish that we had more hardware customization options, like actually like a GPU drop-down menu. So if you don't want a 1050 Ti with your i5, potentially 1060 or anything higher. And RTX cards are supposed to be in the pipeline whenever they come out. So they are thinking about the future upgradable options, but I wish that we had like a, you know, a little customization that is there and not just an entire spec sheet given to you per model. But the one thing I appreciate is the warranty policy. It is only one year, but can be extended further. But this whole system is is designed to be user upgradable. So if you replace the hardware, like your graphics card or swap out for additional CPU, it does not void the warranty. So Lenovo Legion will still cover all the original hardware if anything goes wrong with that. But one of the most interesting things about the C530 to me is the enclosure itself. I kind of wish it was sold separately because it's got a lot of cool elements like this front perforation with a built-in coarse dust filter behind it with a tasteful Legion logo illumination. The dark gray color scheme looks nice and the side panels are easily removable so you can access the internals for hardware upgrades. The handle is part of the frame that complements this compact size for transportation and the transparent honeycomb top is this good initiative to reveal the red illumination spill on the GPU and the back chamber, although it is an acrylic piece and glass would have been so much better. The front I.O. is almost hidden at the bottom with dual USB 3 and audio jacks, while the rear I.O. has six more USB ports, two of which are Gen 2 with LAN graphics output and an additional HDMI on the motherboard. There's also this rubber band to tighten the exit and cables for a little extra organization. The main airflow is delivered via the two 92 millimeter fans at the front and one 80 millimeter exhaust fan at the back. The system is pretty quiet at idle, but ramps up at audible levels at low so you'll need headphones to drown out the loud fans. But I will be replacing those front fans with some Noctwist and also populating a small low profile CPU cooler for better temps and uh, also quieter operation. Now Lenovo tells us they might release a standalone version of this case, which would be so awesome with some minor modifications to complement, you know, building a system in it yourself. Uh, so let us know if you're into this case or not in the comments below. As you can see, the interior looks fine. Cables are bunched up and secured all over the chassis. The only non-black cables are from the front fans, but otherwise it's a clean job on both sides. The GPU has an airflow shroud separating incoming air from the exhaust, and I could replace it with something more powerful because we have an 8-pin PCI cable from the power supply, 
but the power supply varies from 280 watts to 450 watts, so any upgrades must take that into account. And the power supply is an ATX unit at 140 millimeters with bronze efficiency, but if you're replacing it, some units might not align with the cutout for the power socket at the rear. Now the sample configuration I received here does not actually exist in stores, but with my i7-8700 GTX 1050Ti, the frame rates at 1080p with high settings are quite good, giving me some headroom for extra resolution at medium settings with okay frame rates. But the GTX 1060 would definitely complement this CPU better. The 1050Ti used here is a non-branded red PCB open air 1.5 slot card with a good factory overclock to 1520 MHz. The RAM is running in a single channel mode and branded as RAM Excel, so finding an exact module will be super difficult, so any RAM upgrades in the future will have to be totally new dual module kits. The NVMe SSD here are Toshiba XG5 OEM drives with awesome performance. The hard drives are Seagate 7200 RPM uh, drives, so not bad. And the power supply is an Asbel branded Lenovo OEM unit that they use on many of their PCs. Now the cooler on here is pretty weak, throttling to 3.4 gigahertz with 81 degrees Celsius at full load, while the GPU stabilized at 78 degrees Celsius at 15, 20 megahertz. And I wonder how many degrees we can drop by populating new fans and the beefier CPU cooler that still fits inside the chassis. Stay tuned for that. Wow, could this be the one? This actually is the Landcool One. The case with a fantastic front panel design with a brushed aluminum plate, complementing airflow and the gorgeous RGB illumination through the central cavity. We've got a Type-C port at the front, a capable interior for water cooling and airflow, and a totally flush glass panel on the side. And to spice things up, the Li and Lee streamer cables give off unique RGB illumination for 24 and 8 pin cables, controlled via the case lighting or through its own controller hub for this interesting color spill on the interior. And you can check them out in the description below. All right, so let's end this conversation with some real talk. I want to see a standalone version of this case released with a glass top panel instead. I want to see more hardware customization options like a GPU drop down menu so you can upgrade based on your preference. I'd like to see a beefier CPU cooler included, especially for the i7 models and the base configuration with only an 8% price markup uh, versus if you were to buy the parts separately. Sounds like a really good deal. However, if you're entering the higher tier configurations, then the price markup reaches close to 20%, making it less of a good value. I do love the enclosure design and the compactness of this machine, especially compared to other pre-built systems that sell for roughly the same price with the same configuration. You know, they're all mid towers and I really appreciate the compactness of something like this because you don't necessarily need an ATX motherboard for you know an i5 or an i3 with a single gpu i'm happy they're compacting things into this itx form factor i would love to see the front panel redesigned to support larger fans so maybe dual 120s or single 140 fans so you can have slightly more airflow uh, at quieter operation but now it is your turn to speak out given this whole user upgradable nature of the system and the enclosure what might you upgrade first components wise would it be the gpu would you swap out the cpu cooler Probably not the CPU itself, you know, like an i5 for gaming is totally fine. Um, and um, yeah, let me know in the comments. All right, guys, that is it. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Subscribe to our new boot sequence channel. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video.